Good morning, everyone. My name is Vijay Gupta, and you're watching Biology Classes. So, welcome to all of you in this lecture of Biology. Students, today I'm going to start a new topic that is the extra embryonic membranes. Now, I'm trying to make a few important topics for all my students. Uh, today, I started a new topic that is the extra embryonic membrane. It is especially important for all my 12th student and also for the BSc second year student. And it also helpful for all the student which are going to prepare, which, which are going to face the a competitive any competitive exam or the medical exam so let's start the video first of all what is the meaning of extra embryonic membrane as we know that embryo develops inside the uterus of the female so the embryo surrounds by a few membranes which are very helpful in the development of embryo and these extra membranes which surrounds the embryo are known as the extra embryonic membranes and they plays very important role in the development of embryo or the embryonic development so first of all i will tell you about a proper definition of extra embryonic membrane as you can see on the board that extra embryonic membranes are the layers these are the actually the layers as you can see in this diagram which i made with different colors so these are the layers enclosing the embryo this is the embryo and these layers are enclosing the embryo completely so these are the layers enclosing embryo inside the uterus and these layers present inside the embryo sorry inside the uterus as we know that embryo develops inside the uterus of female so these membranes are found inside the uterus okay these uh, there are total four layers present in human being so total four four extra embryonic membranes are present in human being but before that i will clear the definition all the membranes which surrounds the embryo inside the uterus of female are known as the extra embryonic membrane so one by one i will tell you all the membranes in detail start with number one that is chorion number two that is the amnion number three yolk sac or the umbilical vesicle in case of human being it is known as umbilical vesicle but in case of birds and reptiles it is known as the yolk sac and the last one is allantois so start with number one that is the chorion chorion as you can see this diagram the, this is the chorion the outermost layer is known as the chorion so this is the chorion inside the chorion a cavity is present you can say this is the chorionic cavity and inside the cavity a fluid is filled which protect the embryo from outer shocks and jerks so it protect the embryo okay so it is the outermost layer it also give rise a few villi which are known as the chorionic villi as you can see these are the chorionic villi which enters into the inner wall of the uterus so this is the outermost and very important layer for the developing embryo now it is the outermost layer as i have told you that chorion is the outermost layer formed by the mesoderm and the trophoblast cell now these two terms what is the meaning of mesoderm as we know that when the embryo develops then it consists of three layers three germ layers which are known as ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm the middle layer is known as the mesoderm so the chorion is made up by the mesoderm and trophoblast cell now what is the meaning of trophoblast cells the embryo surrounds by some special types of cells which are known as trophob trophoblast cell i will tell you in detail in my uh, future videos like embryonic development i will tell you in detail about the trophoblast cells but in this video in short i want to tell you that trophoblast cells are the special type of cells which surrounds the embryo during the embryonic development so these trophoblast cells and mesoderm both collectively give rise to the outermost membrane that is known as the chorion so this is the chorion inside the chorion a chorionic cavity in which a, fl a fluid is filled which protect the embryo so <clears throat> it contains a fluid that absorb the outer shocks so as i told you before this portion this pink colored portion it's a fluid which absorb the outer shocks and protect the embryo and protect the embryo it give rise to chorionic villi as you can see these are the chorionic villi so the chorion give rise to chorionic villi which enters into the endometrium and to form the placenta what is the endometrium as we know that embryonic development takes place inside the uterus of female so the inner lining the innermost lining of the uterus is known as endometrium and these chorionic villi enters into the endometrium and to form the placenta now what is the placenta 
placenta is an very is a very important part that formed by the embryo as well as the uterus both participate in the formation of placenta so the placenta consists of two main parts the fetal portion of placenta and the maternal portion of placenta the part of placenta which formed by the embryo is known as the fetal portion of placenta while the part of uh, placenta uh, which is uh, related to the body of mother is known as the maternal part of placenta as you can see is then in this diagram this orange colored part is known as the fetal portion of placenta means fetus fetus is a word which used for the developing embryo so this is the fetal part of placenta while this zigzag part is known as the maternal portion of placenta so this part is collectively known as placenta through which embryo absorb its all the nutrition and placenta plays a very important role in the embryonic development so now we'll talk about the next layer that is the amnion so below the chorion this blue colored layer is known as the amnion so as you can see in the diagram this membrane directly surrounds the embryo and known as the embryonic sorry amniotic uh, amnion inside the amnion a cavity is present that is known as the amniotic cavity and inside the amniotic cavity a fluid is filled that is known as the amniotic fluid so this is the amnion inside the amnion this is the cavity and this cavity consists of amniotic fluid which is similar in the function as the chorionic fluid it also protect the embryo from outer jerk and shocks it absorb all the shocks so this membrane also protect the embryo and another functions is it also uh, prevent the embryo from drying off as we know that moisture is very required for the embryo so this amniotic fluid create a moisture for the developing embryo and it also provides some space to the developing embryo for the movement also so let's watch in the theory so this membrane is directly surround the developing embryo so this membrane directly surround the embryo this is the embryo and it is directly surround by the amnion it consists of amniotic fluid inside the amnion a cavity that is amniotic cavity and a fluid which is known as the amniotic fluid so this is the amniotic fluid uh, it also absorb the shocks as i told you before that it is similar in function of chorion so it also protect the embryo from the outer shocks it prevent the embryo from drying off as i told you before that it is a liquid and this liquid protect the embryo from the drying off means it create the moisture in the body of embryo and it also enables the embryo for a some freedom of the movement when the embryo develops after 4 to 6 4 to 5 months it moves in some ways so this amnion this amniotic cavity enables the embryo and it provide the a few space in which the embryo moves freely so it provide the freedom uh, to the embryo for the movement inside the uterus of the female okay so now the next one is third layer that is called as yolk sac in case of human being it is known as the umbilical vesicle so what about this one yolk sac or the umbilical vesicle as you can see in this diagram this yellow colored structure is yolk sac or the umbilical vesicle now what is the meaning of yolk sac in the other animals such as birds and reptiles it is present in the form of yolk sac and it contains a lot of nutrients which are very required for the development of embryo of birds and reptiles because the development takes place inside the egg and outside of the body so nutrition is totally depend on the yolk sac but in case of human being it is not required so it is generally you can say it provide a little bit nutrition and also helps in other function so this is the yolk sac or the umbilical vesicle now look at the board the yolk sac contains nutrients in the other animals such as birds and reptiles so it contains nutrients in other animals but in human it is known as umbilical vesicle as i told you before that it, in human it is known as umbilical vesicle it carries oxygenated blood from the placenta to the developing embryo in human being is functions it, its function is to carry the oxygenated blood means the pure blood means the o2 blood the blood with o2 it carries the pure blood from the placenta to the developing embryo as i told you before that placenta is very helpful or the placenta is completely responsible for the complete development of the embryo so the pure blood the oxygenated blood carries through the umbilical vesicle inside the body of the embryo so 
this collective structure is known as the umbilical cord it's a rod like structure which is attached to the body of embryo and to the placenta it is the connection between the embryo and the placenta so all the nutrients oxygenated blood carries inside the body of the uh, embryo with the help of the umbilical cord and all the excretive waste co2 etc removes out from the body of the embryo through the umbilical cord so this umbilical umbilical cord create a connection between the embryo and the placenta so this is the umbilical vesicle or the umbilical cord so it is uh, but in human it is known as the umbilical vesicle it carries oxygenated blood from the placenta to the developing embryo so it carries the oxygenated blood to the embryo from the placenta now the last one is allantois as you can see this green colored structure is known as the allantois actually it is the small outgrowth and it is functionless in human being but in other animals it is uh, it helps in the excretion means it uh, helps in the removal of excretory waste or the nitrogenous waste from the body of the embryo so this is the allantois now what is allantois in human it is non functional as i told you it in human being it is the non functional layer and a structure and it as a small outgrowth and this is the small outgrowth and but in other animals but in non humans or the other animals it helps in the waste removal different waste of the body means the nitrogenous waste it helps to remove all the waste in the body from the body in other animals but in human it is functionless and a small outgrowth so it was all about the different extra embryonic membranes which are chorion amnion umbilical vesicle or the yolk sac and the last one is uh, um, allantois so i think all the layers and the topic is very clear to you still if you want to ask any type of question any query then you may ask in the comment section i will try my best to reply you so in next lecture i will start a very new topic an important topic for you please comment in the comment section that on which topic you want to uh, see my videos so thanks for watching have a good day